again. So the route changed due to sandstorms. Of course, we didn't know it at this point. They declared it as uh, before the riders actually got there. The safety helicopters essentially couldn't get up into the sky. And when that happens, the bikers are particularly at risk. Nobody wants them to be absent. The medics, that is. Leon Castor having a chat. Cyril Despray saying, uh, for the moment, we're waiting for the big stage to start. We're going to see how it goes in these conditions. So I'm going to try and attack Coma for me. It's going to be a bit delicate starting as I am in 11th, and I hope there won't be too much dust. I hope that I'll be in a position to attack today. So, absolutely no secrets as far as his strategy was concerned, and look at the scenery once again. By the way, these aren't really rocks. It's tar that's actually seeped up. Yeah, there's that much oil in, in the region. Seeped up, tar sands, if you like. Uh, sticks to the sand and does harden, of course. You can't exactly refine it. There we went over the tracks. It was a bump for some. Camel grass as well. There was high speed flat sections and there was dunes awaiting for the unwary. Well, they're all starting to stick together. These four bikes Coma, Blaise, Via Doms, the. Uh, and Esteve Puyol for the Doms with problems later. He, of course, the. One of the water carriers for Coma, so he's sticking by him just in case he had any mechanical trouble at all. A lot of chatting going on amongst the lead group. Behind them, second group of riders including Despray, Fretinier, Thierry Betis, the sand specialist, and Pal Anders Olivaceta. They're all keeping it in the family. Good job too, because it was all about to start getting a bit nasty. If you can see grass here, it's because the sand's not that deep. And sand, when it's blown by the wind and falls very, very lightly, almost crystallizes itself in a honeycomb. It becomes as soft as baby powder, and it's known as fesh fesh. You can disappear in it. Well, that was waiting them. All was pleasant at this part of the day. <laughs> the dunes were coming up. Dear, oh dear. Well, they say there's only two kinds of biker on the Dakar. Those who've been down hard, and those who are going down hard. You just have to hope. It's a softish landing. Now there's some fesh fesh around to soften the blow. Incidentally, lead Brit home on the bikes today. Oh, and apologies, I have to say, to Steve Malone. I've been calling him Stefan Malone. It's a typo error on the uh, sheets that we've been given with the numbers. It's Steve, of course. Sorry, Dawn. In they came then. First refueling, 15 minutes you've got. Yep, yeah, set your watch. Get a bit of fuel on board. And get some calories inside you as well. There's sandwiches, that kind of thing. Everyone wants a full top up, 250 kilometers normally, but in soft sand, probably an awful lot less. Poor old Mick yesterday, of course, he was over revving the uh, engine. And uh, of course, in the soft sand to try and get out, naturally enough. The radiators, as you saw, were all blocked yesterday, so cooling was a problem. Well, they were to alter the route, but as yet, you can see it was a little bit windy out there. The helicopters naturally were up at this point. But who was down? Jory Viadoms, it was. Coma just lost his water carrier. As you can see, it was uh, an overfront. It was a broken arm. He's off to Las Palmas in the Canary Islands. Helicoptered out. You see everything. The bike was way in the air six, seven times. Pieces flying everywhere, so... I'm glad, I'm glad he'll be all right. That was Chris Blaze. He stopped, lost half an hour, and with it, lost a podium chance. We salute him. He's down to fifth place, finishing 12th today after stopping to help out via Doms. Just talk to him and keep him in the zone, as they say, until the medics got there. Well, one top tip when you're on the Dakar, especially when you start to get to the dunes. Here was the sandstorm, by the way. And all of a sudden, the helicopters just couldn't even fly underneath it. They had to down and were relying on mobile pictures from some of the trucks. Don't follow tracks too closely. <laughs> sure, follow them in terms of direction, but don't sit track on track, because over a dune, if you're following in somebody's course, you might meet somebody on the other side of that dune, and that's when it gets a bit nasty. Everybody was suffering out there. If it's very soft like this, it's so punishing. You can spend 20 or so minutes just trying to get out of a hollow. This was coma. 
Yeah, that's right. The guy wears number one in trouble. So over they went through the softest stuff that most of them had come to terms with or met in this Dakar. It was hard. Incidentally, lead Brit home today. Big up to Ian Myers on his MTS motorcycle. It's on a KTM 525 EXC Super Production. Did a great job today coming in ahead of uh, Broom, Paul Broom on his Honda 650 XR. And uh, Colin Askey, it was third of the Brits today. We're still waiting for Robbie Allen and Steve Malone as we go to air. Look at this. Rock and roll, rock and roll, rock and roll. Just keep that back tyre out of the soft stuff. You've got to do it. And Cyril Despray did. And guess what? He came home for victory today, taking a different route. He'd had his problems, even went down today. I told you they all suffered. Bike almost disappearing. No, it fell on its side. Unbelievably soft out there. Oliver Setta was picking his way through brilliantly. Desprey back up and in motion. It's fourth overall after his stage win today. Absolutely delighted. His 11th stage win on the Dakar. Oliver Setter always looks good. Lost an hour in the early stages. He'll be ruining that now because he was so good today. Privateer, don't forget. Finished second. He's ninth in the overall standings. Fantastic. Masterpiece of continuity. David Castier finished the fifth time, third in a row. <laughs> yes, he's uh, always there or thereabouts. Can never count him out, Castier, and he's in third place ahead of Despre in the overall rankings. Just look how empty it was out there today. The tarmac road beckoned. We went round the sandstorm, and home they came. So confirmation how they came in. Cyril Despray, head of Palander's Oliver Setta. Nice to see them doing well. Kostya, Sala and uh, Esteve Puyol in fifth place. Coma with sixth. And as a result, he stays on top there. Ten minutes and 47 clear of Esteve Puyol. It looks like a Spanish affair for now. Well, it's crazy, he said. Uh, I got the feeling that I'm just not able to ride anymore. On the dunes, I got stuck four times. Far more times than the whole of the Dakar last year. It's really unbelievable. The sand is so soft. Camel grass is hard. We're all very, very tired. In the first uh, five kilometers, I was lost. And then Dupre and Bretigny came. And then uh, I tried to follow Dupre all day. And I made it. And, but uh, without him, I could not go so fast. But that was a great day for me. And Dave Kestier saying, uh, I hope Jordi is fine, but uh, when I saw him on the ground, Bia Doms he's talking about, it was really tough. Actually, a teammate lying on the ground like that. We're professional riders, we train for this race, and you see a privateer on the ground, you say to yourself, that's because of a lack of training, maybe, but when you see a professional rider down there, you realize that anybody can get hurt out there. It's always a bit scary. Parce qu'on sait qu'on va vite et quand on touche le sol, en général, on se fait mal. Donc, ça fait toujours un peu, toujours un peu peur.